This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. We've seen a number of automakers announce plans to go electric, and now Audi is the latest. Starting in 2026, the automaker will only launch new vehicles with electric drive systems. And between now and 2033, it will phase out production of internal combustion engines completely. Along the same lines, Mercedes is going to slash its diesel and gas engine lineup in Europe so it can meet the region's strict emission regulations. The company's COO said that going through Euro 7 emission standards, it will have to reduce the number of engine variants it has by 50%. It was not revealed what's going away, but we've got to believe big thirsty V8s will be some of the first. Ford is once again delaying when salaried workers can come back to the office. The automaker told employees they'll continue to work remotely until at least January due to the resurgence of the coronavirus. It applies to workers in North America and most of its international operations. At the same time, Ford is also looking into hybrid models where employees come to the office two or three days a week and work from home the rest of the time. In other Ford news, Ward's Auto is shedding some light on how issues arose with the hardtop for the Bronco. How Tai Tang, Ford's chief product platform and operations officer, says that Webasto, the supplier that makes the roof, sourced tooling from another supplier that happens to be located in Wuhan, China. Due to the spread of the coronavirus there, the tooling was late in reaching Webasto. That was the root of the problem, but after production began, even a Ford spokesman admitted it just didn't look right. That, along with rumored quality issues, Ford recalled the models it had already made and replaced the roofs for free. But even as it gets the problem under control, there could still be problems meeting demand. There's whispers that Ford and Webasto were surprised by the number of hand raisers for the hardtop and now realize that Webasto's plant that makes the roof is not big enough. Man, talk about brand equity. Toyota started making the Corolla 55 years ago. It's gone through 12 different generations, and last month it passed the 50 million mark in sales. The Corolla hit the market in Japan in 1966. It came to the U.S. market in 1969 with a base price of 1700 bucks, which in today's money would be about $12,600. Today's Corolla starts at 20 grand. So why is it so much more expensive? Because it delivers far higher levels of safety, much lower levels of emissions, and significantly better fuel economy. Not to mention that it's quieter, smoother, more powerful, and just better all around. And making it that much better does not come for free. The age of silicones began at Fokker more than 70 years ago. Whether you're looking for thermal management of battery systems or the protection of electronics, let your innovations be powered by Fokker silicones. Visit us at Fokker.com. E-mobility powered by Fokker silicones. Mobility is becoming electric, connected, and autonomous, just like the manufacturing world but will always be one thing, a reliable partner for our customers. With its SPAC merger and listing on Wall Street behind it, Lucid is ready to start delivering its air sedan to customers. The first examples will be the $169,000 Dream Edition, and it just announced that reservation holders will have the choice between two versions, one geared towards performance and the other for range. The performance has a dual motor all-wheel drive setup that puts out 1,111 horsepower and does zero to 60 in under two and a half seconds. The Dream Edition range is also a dual motor all-wheel drive setup, but it puts out 933 horsepower and will do zero to 60 in 2.7 seconds. While Lucid is still waiting for EPA figures, it did do a range test with Motor Trend using two range cars on a highway in California. They completed the 445-mile trip on a single charge, 
and one had 30 miles of charge remaining, while the other had 72 miles. EPA figures will not be that high, but it's still pretty impressive. Deliveries of both versions will start before the end of the year, and Lucid will launch the Air Grand Touring shortly after that. EV startup Bollinger Motors is expanding its commercial vehicle lineup. The company will offer Class 4 and Class 5 commercial trucks in addition to the Class 3 vehicles it announced last year. The Class 4 truck will have a weight rating of 16,000 pounds, a payload of 9,000 pounds, with 1,000 cubic feet of cargo space, while the Class 5 truck has a weight rating of 19,500 pounds, a payload of 11,000 pounds, and 1,200 cubic feet of cargo space. Both models will have ranges of over 200 miles. Bollinger plans to build prototypes soon, and production could start in 2023. Speaking of commercial vehicles, Mercedes revealed the new Citan van. It's offered as both a panel van and tourer. The tourer comes with a rear bench seat. The first examples to hit the market will have a short wheelbase, but a long wheelbase model will also be available. But even with the short wheelbase, Mercedes says it has more cargo space than the previous model. The new Citan will have the option of three diesel engines and two gasoline, which can be mated to either a six-speed manual or seven-speed DCT. But this will also be the last new vehicle project for commercial customers from Mercedes-Benz vans that uses an ICE. The E-Citan is scheduled to launch in the second half of 2022 with the same cargo space as the ICE versions and an estimated range of 285 kilometers or 177 miles. The other versions will launch in the middle of next month in Europe and carry a starting price of 23,800 euros in Germany. The world is changing at an ever-increasing pace. No matter what the mode of transportation, there is always the need for an efficient propulsion system. And that's exactly what Borg Warner has been doing since the earliest days of the automotive industry. We want to know what drives your testing. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. Slowly but surely, fuel cell vehicles continue to inch their way forward. In a surprise development, Toyota announced it's going to start manufacturing fuel cells for heavy trucks at one of its assembly plants in Georgetown, Kentucky in 2023. Remember, that's when Toyota said it's going to axe the Avalon, which is built at the same plant. Even more surprising is that Toyota wants to sell these fuel cells to Class 8 manufacturers. It's highly unlikely that Toyota would make this kind of investment unless it already had a commitment from a truck manufacturer to buy them. Toyota will sell a kit that includes the fuel cell stack, a high voltage battery, the electric motors, the transmission, and hydrogen storage assembly. It will deliver 300 miles of range in a Class 8 semi with an 80,000 pound cargo load. Well, here's our Autoline Insight. Toyota's development vehicles are Kenworths. So we're guessing that's who's going to buy these fuel cells. Kenworth is owned by Packard, which also makes Peterbilt. And Packard is the last American-owned heavy truck manufacturer. If it buys fuel cells from Toyota, it will instantly be competitive in the race for zero emission Class 8 semis. Automakers and suppliers are always on the lookout for universities they can team up with to develop new technology. The supplier Scheffler has a program called SHARE, or Scheffler Advanced Research, that includes two universities in Germany, one in Singapore, and one in China. And now it's adding Ohio State University. I'll apologize to the Buckeyes. The Ohio State University. Scheffler is relying on these universities to help it develop automated mobility, hydrogen technologies, and renewable energies, digitalization, robotics, and Industry 4.0. And why recruit these schools? 
because students often approach problems with a fresh set of eyes. They don't bring a lot of baggage in terms of conventional thinking, and while that doesn't always work out, it can lead to big breakthroughs. We invite you to join us for AutoLine After Hours this afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Some of the topics that John and Gary will get into include what effect, if any, will the Bolt battery debacle have on future EV sales? Is the end of Prop 22 the end of Uber in California? And it takes 26 weeks to make a chip. Will the car companies ever catch up? But that's a wrap for today. Thanks for tuning in. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. Borg Warner, propulsion solutions that support a clean, energy-efficient world. Vocker, creating tomorrow's solutions. And by Scheffler, we pioneer motion.